Greetings and welcome to TMI Live 35 from poetry to uh, media, from the literal to the metaphorical and back again. Um, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here uh, and welcome. So um, for those of you who may not have seen this before, I am in the library of Eric McLuhan. Uh, in rural Prince Edward County. The library consists of around 6,000 volumes and I've been taking some time almost every Tuesday evening to uh, document and inventory it. Uh, and I take uh, 15 minutes or so out of uh, my time to uh, show you what's going on and uh, you know update with what's happening with the McLuhan Institute. So welcome and thank you for coming. Uh, say rain. Good to see you, man. Thanks for being here. Um, a lot has been happening. Um, I'm pleased to say that, um, it's really easy for me to get in here on a Tuesday night now because I live here. So, uh, the exciting news is, uh, my wife and I, uh, with our two kids have moved out to my parents' property in the country here and we're selling, have almost sold our house in Picton. So, um, that's a huge relief because, um, the future of this library was was a little up in the air because we couldn't move it to our house. So I have a little bit of breathing room and that um, I'll be holding on to this library for uh, a long time to come, I hope, which means the pressure is off a little bit to get this job done. Although I've been doing it for over a year and haven't made a huge amount of progress. So uh, I don't know how much pressure was on. This was always the goal to be out here. So uh, I'm happy to be here. And thank all of you um, for your support in that. A lot of people have been very helpful, especially um, people who've contributed on Patreon, patreon.com slash McLuhan, uh, which helps me every month. Thank you very much for that. Um, some other exciting news is uh, a good friend of mine. Uh, I'm not sure if he wants to be named or be in the background, so I'll let him decide that. Uh, has stepped in to offer me to help uh, do things a little more professionally around here. Um, so if you notice some changes for the more savvy on the social media side of things and in general organization, that's because my man behind the scenes is uh, helping me out in a huge way. So thank you, sir. I appreciate that. That's uh, truly fantastic and I'm excited to... Uh, to move things ahead. So um, keep an eye out for changes. We're going to be doing uh, more things and um, yeah, keep tuned for that. Um, I'm uh, Where the library is concerned, I'm still on the McLuhan shelves. I'll be on them for a little while. The McLuhan shelves are over, you can't see them in this frame. Uh, they're over my shoulder here and they're uh, quite a lot of books. Eric McLuhan's collection of Marshall McLuhan's works um, some of which are Eric McLuhan's works and other people's works tucked in between. Um, and there's generally a, a method to the madness in the organization of shelves. Um, things are placed on the same shelf, in the same section, side by side for specific reasons. And I'm going to get to one of those reasons here in a moment. I wanted to show you um, a book I've just cataloged here. Uh, Last episode, I think two weeks ago, I looked at uh, a few copies of Understanding Media, which were Marshall's or Corinne's that Marshall put a lot of notes in. Um, uh, so if you saw that, this will look familiar to you. Um, of course, it is backwards, but uh, this is a first edition of Understanding Media. Um, but this is Eric's copy, and it's inscribed for Eric me flaming electric boy spelled b-h-o-y uh, this book about the electric age dad may 15 64 uh, and then he added inscribed inscribed marshall McLuhan. sorry about the lighting i'm going to work on that uh this is is great it's um it doesn't have a ton of notes in it um but it was obviously special to dad because uh, Eric, that is, it was his copy. Um, and what it does have is um, 
a page of notes. I put a copy of this on the Instagram page if you want to look at it. Um, but I'll, I'll decode it for you here. And um, this warms my heart. And thank you, Dad. Uh, although maybe it's a conceit to give myself all the credit for it. But, um, you know, Dad died. It's coming up on two years ago this month. But leading up to that, um, I was asking, uh, I was constantly asking Dad to leave me notes um, about the works of McLuhan works, where they came from, anything he can tell me about them, tell us about them, because um, I saw a time when, you know, he wasn't going to be here um, because his health was never all that great. And um, he was prone to having sudden health problems and... Uh, you know, he didn't survive the last one. So here's an example of a note dad left behind for us, uh, which I'll show you here. And it says, UM, uh, Understanding Media, rewrote, rewrote four to five times. Uh, the publisher uh, told them to tighten it over and over. Uh, Mom would go through uh, several reprints on the Royal Portable, uh, Royal, Corinne McLuhan did most of uh, Marshall's typing uh, that his secretary didn't do, or before he had a secretary. Um, another paragraph at 81 St. Mary Street, that's uh, U University of Toronto campus, uh, right near the center where the center is now. Uh, 81 St. Mary Street, the proofs arrived, wacky, tried to figure out of order called publisher uh, and I believe this is a short form for shit happened <laughs> um, changed pagination uh, offered to pay my error meaning dad to bring the master manuscript um, editor quote I guess I'll have to read the damn thing uh, it's the first surrealist manuscript we've ever seen Apparently the story there, which dad had told me, um, the story behind this is that uh, somebody had dropped the typescript and just scrambled the pages back together in whatever order. Um, and so it arrived in crazy looking disarray. Uh, I don't know if they actually did fly dad down to tighten it up, figure it out or not. Uh, and then at the bottom we have a note. 6,282,453 bytes. And I guess that is the, uh, the size of understanding media as a, as a document, as a file, a computer file. So um, that's fun. Thank you, Dad. Uh, yeah, and there's, uh, there aren't a lot of notes in this copy. There's just one at the back. 179 white. And actually, I didn't look at that. Let's take a look. I hope you're all well. Oh, maybe it's right. My eyes are going. No, it says white, but um, 179 refers to chapter 19, wheel, bicycle, and airplane. Oh, no. Okay, so here it is. Uh, when a scholar like Lynn White ventures to make some interrelations even in his own area of special historical study, he causes a good deal of unhappiness among his merely specialist colleagues, etc., etc. So Dad was making note of this Professor White. Curious. Um, following that, uh, I wanted to point out immediately after that, is this understanding poetry Brooks and Warren? Uh, this is a fourth edition. Uh, it has many notes in it. This is deliberately placed um, beside understanding media uh, for a reason, which is by showing you this third edition it will become clear. Um, this is a third edition of understanding poetry. 1960, early 1960s, it's inscribed like understanding media. Again, sorry, I'm going to get the lighting under control. Uh, for Eric, Christmas 1961 from Mother and Dad. 
uh, interesting, not mother and father, not mom and dad, but mother and dad. Uh, Clenth Brooks, a long-standing friend of mine, uh, did revolutionize the teaching of literature in USA with this book. Uh, and for an example as to why Marshall, it might have been significant for Marshall in writing and titling Understanding Media after Understanding Poetry, in the preface to this third edition, I think it was a originally published in 34. Do I have that information here? Anyway, I think it was originally published in 1934. It's good to know these things. Uh, 1938, 1950, uh, and this is copyright 1960 with the introduction dated uh, right around then uh, yeah January 24th 1960 so this was hot off the press gift for dad for Christmas in the preface um, Brooks and Warren write uh, <clears throat> because second paragraph because poetry like all the arts involves this kind of experiential knowledge we miss the value of poetry if we think of its characteristic knowledge as consisting of messages statements, snippets of doctrine. The knowledge that poetry yields is available to us only if we submit ourselves to the massive and subtle impact of the poem as a whole. Well, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Um, I, I really need to devote a lot of time. Okay, look, I need to read this whole library. But in, there are a few books in particular which I and anybody who wishes to go a little beyond the surface of McLuhan work um, down into the roots of McLuhan work needs to read a book like this. Um, here's another note of Dad's on a piece of paper here. Uh, UM hybrid pop style is greater than poem or two poem from ads plus parallel uh, parallel to oh okay okay sorry I'll, I'll put a picture of this up on the uh, Instagram page so you guys can see it um, but he's talking about uh, understanding media being a hybrid between pop style and poem from ads uh, parallel uh, parallel to understanding poetry. Uh, they're both teaching machines. Uh, revolution, revolutionary, uh, colon, kinds of meaning to be experienced, put on, media equals medial equals PS. Uh, not as the, anyway. At the bottom it says uh, PRCR, which means practical criticism, is difficult, so is understanding media. Uh, and critics say, quote unquote, can't communicate. Um, and that brings up another work, Practical Criticism, uh, Levis, F.R. Levis, and um, the other author who I'm blanking on right now, uh, this is another foundational book, Practical Criticism, which is um, uh, what Marshall learned in Cambridge in the mid-late 30s uh, as a style of literary criticism, which he then turned to technological or media or cultural criticism. Oh, hey, Adam, Tamara, Clinton, uh, Jarrett. Thanks for watching, guys. Jarrett, going to drop that news soon. Uh, if anybody knows Jarrett Cole, our man in Winnipeg, keep an eye on him and Jen because they've got uh, things in the works for sure. Um, this volume of Richards, thank you, Jarrett. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, my brain is a little scrambled from, uh, there's a lot going on right now. This is a, a volume which is going to need some study 
not just the book itself, but this particular volume um, because of the wealth of notes inside it. Um, but that is another exercise for another time. I just wanted to point out um, one other thing um, because it's curious. And as I said at the start, um, it's hard to tell sometimes in this library what is put there very deliberately and what is just kind of put somewhere because something needs to be put somewhere. Um, but uh, this is so odd that it, it must be significant and uh, makes you wonder. So on the shelf, we have uh, Dad's copy of Understanding Media, uh, two copies of Brooks and Warren's Understanding Poetry, and then this off print. And on the other side of the, of the off print, is a 2007 Korean edition of Understanding Media. Um, <clears throat> this off print is interesting. It's uh, titled The Beholder's Share and the Problem of Literacy by Harley Parker, Professor, Kern Chair of Communications, Rochester Institute of Technology, Rochester, New York. Uh, and it's dated 1974. Um, and I haven't, I haven't stopped to read it. Um, there are a couple little marks in it. Uh, it talks about education and content, and at the end it goes into the arts. And it sounds very much Marshall. It makes me wonder if Marshall wrote it. I don't know. Or, you know, Harley was obviously very influenced by Marshall. Um, the arts, because of the fact that they utilize various sensory modalities, offer the best opportunity for education today. In our world, the bias of a literate visual culture with its linear, linear and logical forms of organization, what we have called the bias of the eye, is losing its monopoly on perception and on social organization. It is losing its monopoly on education too, as schoolmen come to realize that their task is not simply to preserve an obsolete, exclusively literate culture, but to develop intelligence, a balanced sensitivity to all forms of experience, a sensitivity that may be cultivated through the arts. Um, so that does sound a little more like Harley um, using what he learned or discovered with uh, Marshall. Uh, very interesting. Uh, anyway, from here, I'm going into some books. Uh, I've got a book on Tennyson's poetry, uh, more foreign translations of understanding media. And then I did, uh, I did a TMI live on this um, early, early in the numbers, one of the early numbers. Uh, and this is our copy a uh, complete copy of the Dewline newsletter, the complete run, um, which is uh, just short of two complete volumes. It, it ended at one point uh, for a lot of reasons. I won't go into it all again, um, but uh, Eric McLuhan edited it. Eric was kind of the go-between uh, between Marshall and um, the publisher in New York City. This is a project that developed out of the Fordham year, 68, 69. Uh, and anyway, there were, um, there were a lot of problems with it. It was a great idea. Um, high, you know, it was kind of a proto blog. It was supposed to be, you know, hot off the mind of McLuhan, but, um, it was notoriously late, uh, you know, weeks behind production, uh, the production values were high. The production costs were very high. Um, so it, it makes for a really interesting artifact, but one that was um, eventually unsuccessful. Although um, here in the building, I have a box full of um, uh, materials, uh, drafts of all the issues, as well as the um, subscription role, which is huge, like thousands of names. So it went out, um, but uh, it just didn't last, unfortunately. Um, anyway, uh, I think that's good for tonight. We've done 15 minutes. Um, and then some thank you all for being here. Uh, stay safe. Be kind to each other. 
Uh, and we'll see you next week for uh, more McLuhan Institute Live. Um, follow along. The McLuhan Institute is on Instagram and Twitter. I post different things there, um, which are more or less appropriate to those different forms. So it's uh, McInstitute on Twitter, um, McMCL Institute on uh, Instagram, or back in, you know, you'll find it. Search for the McLuhan Institute. Thanks. Good night.